Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about my week number 11 wide receiver start or sit decisions for fantasy football in 2021. Inside today's video, we're going to be going over every single matchup from all the games on Sunday all the way until Monday Night Football, and I'll be telling you guys whether I believe you should start or sit the wide receivers in every single matchup. But before we could get on into things, I would like to ask if you are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, to please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Not only is it free, I put out content every single day to help you guys win your 2021 fantasy football championship. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure to hit that like button down below to help boost this video up the algorithm so that more beautiful people like yourself can see today's video. I'd also like to ask if you guys are on Twitter and would like to follow me on there to please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. The link to my Twitter is also down below in the video description. So without further ado, let's get into my week number 11 wide receiver start or sit decisions we begin with the new orleans saints at the philadelphia eagles in this game for the new orleans saints and in basically every game for the new orleans saints this year it has been damn near impossible to project which wide receiver you want to be starting some games it's marquez callaway some games it's deontay harris some games it's traquan smith and it is very dicey every single week to try to project which one it is going to be i could see any of them being the number one scoring wide receiver on the saints this week but at the end of the day since it is so hard to project and since there are so many wide receivers that are viable in fantasy football there is no reason to be starting any of these Saints wide receivers, so I'm going to be sitting down Marquez Callaway, Deontay Harris, as well as Traquan Smith. For the Philadelphia Eagles, it seems as though Devontae Smith has found that consistency, that Devontae Smith is going to continue to be a consistent wide receiver game in and game out. Early on in the season, we're seeing him have these big flashes like week number one, his first NFL game. The man scores a touchdown, things are looking great, and then he starts to slow down, and then he has another big game, and then he starts to slow down again. Again, but as of recently, he's looked a lot more consistent. This week, going up against the New Orleans Saints, I really do believe that the Philadelphia Eagles and Nick Sirianni have figured it out. Now, does that mean that the Philadelphia Eagles are going to make the playoffs? Maybe, maybe not. It's not the AFC, where it seems like there's a million teams that can make the playoffs, but the Eagles are looking a lot better once Nick Sirianni finally figured out that, hey, maybe we could run the ball. And if we run the ball, then the defense isn't just going to expect us to pass every time. So now we'll be able to pass more effectively. Very shocking, I know, that it took a bunch of weeks for Nick Sirianni to figure it out. But with them running the ball a lot more, the passing game has been a lot more effective. And I think Devontae Smith has a lot of upside this week up against the New Orleans Saints. And I would not be surprised at all if he was a top 12 wide receiver. Now, would I project him to be that? No, but he does certainly have that upside. For the other Philadelphia Eagles wide receivers, Jalen Rager, Quez Watkins, there's just really nothing to do with them for fantasy football. They are clearly not going to be the number one guy, and Dallas Godert is the number one or number two uh, receiving option on this team, depending how on Devontae Smith is in a game. They paid Dallas Godert the big bucks. They gave him a four-year uh, contract today, so that's very good to hear for Dallas Godert. It's fine for Devontae Smith, though. They're obviously still going to be throwing him the football. Next up, we move to the Miami Dolphins at the New York Jumbo Jets. And in this game, we get Tua Tungavailoa versus Joe Flacco, a game that everyone is just so excited to see. I expect my Miami Dolphins. We are on a two-win streak. We just beat the Baltimore Ravens. This might be a trap game. Kind of worries me a little bit that the Dolphins are somehow going to choke up against the Jets after riding hot up against a win up against the Baltimore Ravens. Now, do I expect that to happen? No, I bet on the Miami Dolphins, but I'm starting to worry just a little bit that maybe this is a trap game. But hey, my projections in my head, I expect this game to be a blowout. I expect the Miami Dolphins to bend the Jumbo Jets over and fuck them relentlessly into the night. I think Jalen Waddle has a huge game this week. Now, the Miami Dolphins wide receiver core is decimated. Will Fuller has been nowhere to be found all season. The guys played in like two games, $10 million, just stole all the money from the Dolphins. Devontae Parker plays some good games, gets hurt, comes back. Now he's hurt again. So we're not going to see him in this game. So I'm going to expect a funnel system to Jalen Waddle that this man is just going to be getting fed the rock all game long. So he's going to be a start for me. The other ancillary wide receivers in Miami, like Mac Hollins, they're not going to be starts for me. For the Jets, with Joe Flacco, certainly a little bit more dicey on which wide receiver to start. The Jets are just having a fucking carousel at the quarterback position. They've had Zach Wilson. They've had Magic Mike White. They've had Josh Johnson. And now they have... 
Joe Flacco. Cool Joe. So, you know, it's going to be a little bit confusing. Corey Davis would be the start for me, though. I think Corey Davis is probably the safest wide receiver on the team. So Jamison Crowder, as well as Elijah Moore, are going to be sits in this game. This is going to be a tough matchup up against the Dolphins defense. So I do not love any of them, but I would side with Corey Davis as the only start for the Jets wide receiver core. Next up, we move to the Washington football team at the Carolina Panthers. In this one, I'm going to be fired up Mr. F1, scary Terry McLaurin. McLaurin has been pretty solid uh, thus far this season and hasn't really flourished and been that top five potential wide receiver that a lot of people believed when they were drafting Terry McLaurin in the offseason that, hey, he had that top five potential, but he also hasn't been a complete and utter unmitigated fucking disaster for your roster, so he's been pretty solid. The Panthers' defense is sneaky, pretty good, so I wouldn't expect Terry McLaurin to necessarily blow the back out of the Carolina Panthers, but I do definitely think he's a start-worthy wide receiver for the Panthers. I'm going to fire up DJ Moore, and I am hoping. Praying to the fantasy lords, the fantasy gods above, that Cam Newton, Mr. Wham Bam Cam Newton, is going to save DJ Moore. Because DJ Moore started off the season on fire. DJ Moore was amazing. Him and Mono Man Sam were making great things happen. They had that amazing chemistry. And then out of nowhere, that chemistry was just snatched away. And then DJ Moore was doing nothing. And now maybe with Cam Newton returning to be the starting quarterback of the team, maybe, just maybe. DJ Moore will return to fantasy relevancy. I hope that is the case. So I'm going to be starting him this week up against the Washington football team. If Robbie Anderson has another good game like he had last week with Cam Newton, I think Robbie Anderson is soon going to become a start-worthy option game in and game out. Next up, we move to the Indianapolis Colts at the no one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. In this game, we're basically starting every single wide receiver for the Indianapolis Colts. But Nick, um, the Colts are going up against the Bills. They're one of the best defenses in the NFL. Aren't you scared about Michael Pittman? Um, yeah, I'm a little bit scared, right? I'm a little bit more nervous. I'm not going to declare that Michael Pittman's going to be a top 10 receiver. That he's going to be a top 5 receiver this week. But I'm not going to completely run away, shiver me timbers, and get scared. Sure, he's going up against the Bills. This is going to be a tough task for Carson Wentz and friends in Indianapolis. But I do believe that Michael Pittman Jr., you're going to play him every single week because of what he's shown us this thus far this season. So I'm going to play him. I don't love the matchup, but I'm starting him. For the Buffalo Bills, you're starting everyone. Stephon Diggs, Emmanuel Sanders, and Cole Beasley. Diggs has finally started to look like the Diggs of last season as of recently. Emmanuel Sanders has almost kind of lost his spot as the number two guy on the team back to Cole Beasley, who was the clear number two guy for the Buffalo Bills last season. But all of them are start worthy in this game. I think this could be a very high scoring game between the Buffalo Bills and the Indianapolis Colts. And that will create a path for all of the Buffalo Bills wide receivers to be relevant for fantasy football for the Indianapolis Colts. They also have T.Y. Hilton. They have all those other wide receivers. Don't really want anything to do with them in this game. Only slightly worried about the fact that Jonathan Taylor may just go beast mode in this game. I understand the Bills defense is good up against the run, but there is always the worries that Jonathan Taylor is just going to take over and just push Michael Pittman and the other Indianapolis Colts wide receivers to the side. Next up, we move to the Detroit Lions at the Cleveland Browns, and Jarvis Landry has been nothing but a complete and utter fucking disappointment this season. People drafted Jarvis Landry not because the upside this guy presents every single week, because Jarvis Landry isn't one of those high upside plays. He's just one of those wide receivers that's super safe. He gets the ball a decent amount. Sure, the Browns are a run-heavy team, but they're still going to give the ball to Jarvis Landry. But aside from week number one up against the Kansas City Chiefs, we're in week number 11 now. That was his best game, was in week number one. After that, he hasn't really done all that much. Now, Odell Beckham Jr. is gone, so the upside of Jarvis Landry is a lot higher. This is a smash matchup up against the Detroit Lions. So if there was ever a get-right game for the Detroit Lions, or not for the Detroit Lions, for Jarvis Landry to bounce back, it would be up against the bum-ass Detroit Lions. The Cleveland Browns just got their ass handed to them by the Patriots last week. So you better believe that Jarvis Landry is in for a bounce-back spot this week up against the Lions, Donovan Peoples-Jones. He's one of those upside plays where you need him to catch one of those deep balls because he's not going to be seeing six, seven, eight targets every single game. He might get four targets, and he needs to take two of those for 70 yards and a touchdown in order to have a lot of fantasy relevance. Now, kind of like just like with Jarvis Landry, if there was ever a week where you can kind of paint the picture Bob Ross style where, hey, Donovan Peoples-Jones gets those three receptions. 
gets 75 yards, gets that touchdown. Sure, it could happen, but it is certainly risky. So Donovan Peoples-Jones will be a sit for me. All of the Lions wide receivers, we've got Amon Ross St. Brown. We've got Khalif Raymond. We've got a bunch of names. Who cares? It doesn't even seem like Jared Goff's going to play in this game. This sounds worrisome for the Lions. I understand Jared Goff isn't fucking Tom Brady out there, but things could get worse than Tom Brady, so I don't want anything to do with these Lions wide receivers. Next up, we move to the San Francisco 49ers at the Jacksonville Jaguars, but before we break this game down at the wide receiver position, I would like to ask if you have ended up enjoying thus far to please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below as well as hitting that like button. I would appreciate it a ton. So we got Debo Samuel as a start for the 49ers. Now, last week up against the Rams, this to be a tit for tat back and forth game between the 49ers and the Rams. That was not the case at all. The 49ers got a tr just ran. Actually, I almost said got a train ran on them because that's what I expected to happen by the Rams. They absolutely demolished the Rams. And I'm like, oh, Brandon Ayuk's out of the doghouse. So Brandon Ayuk's going to have a great game. Brandon Ayuk might be back in the doghouse. Brandon Ayuk has been so inconsistent this season. And actually, he has been consistent. He has been consistently fucking atrocious. And then recently, I finally started to buy back in. Oh, look at that. Look at this consistency for two games. Now we can buy back in. And then right when I declare it's time to hop back on the fucking Brandon Ayuk bandwagon, the bandwagon fucking crashes and burns and explodes. Don't want anything to do with Brandon Ayuk. I'm starting Debo Samuel because you play him every single week. This guy could be a top five wide receiver. He may be the number one wide receiver on the week. So you better believe you're going to play Debo Samuel for the Jacksonville Jaguars. They've got Marvin Jones. They've got Jamal Agnew. They have LaVishka Chenault. If there was a gun to my head, hey, Nick, you got to pick one. It's probably Agnew. But do I want to start any of them at the end of the day? No. So we're not going to be starting any of these Jacksonville wide receivers. Next up, we move to the Houston Texans at the Le Titans. In this one, you're going to be firing up A.J. Brown, no Julio Jones. So you play A.J. Brown. It's pretty basic. A.J. Brown really was sucking on some donkey hog early on in the season. Kind of caught fire as of recently. We're going to continue to ride the hot streak with A.J. Brown and fire him up up against a garbage Houston Texans defense. For the Texans, we've got Brandon Cooks, and we're going to play him. Now, there's always a risk. When playing Brandon Cooks, it's not because Brandon Cooks is bad or anything. It's because the Texans are bad. And with how good the Titans defense has looked, you know, maybe the Texans don't score a single point in this game. But I'm still to fire up Brandon Cooks with the upside that, sure, while the team sucks ass, I think Brandon Cooks will still be a fantasy-relevant player. For the other Tennessee Titans, we've got Nick Westbrook, EKN. We've got Marcus Johnson. I don't know. I don't want to be starting any of those other guys I seem like or not I seem like, I feel like, I feel like any of them could be the wide receiver too in this game, and I also feel like maybe none of them have any relevance in this game, so I don't want to start any of them, and then we got the Houston Texans, other backups, Nico Collins and friends, Nico Collins, that's a fun name, great rookie year somewhat, not like a great rookie year, but has shown some flashes, but not a guy that you want to be starting on your fantasy roster, next up we got the Green Bay Packers at the Minnesota Vikings, and in this one, we've got a lot of wide receivers to start. Devontae Adams, you play him every single week. The guy is the upside to be one of the best wide receivers in fantasy football. This is a matchup between Aaron Rodgers and Mr. You Like That, Kirk Cousins, that could be extremely high scoring. And when there's a lot of points, typically the wide receivers get a lot of points. I know, maybe shocking that when it's a high scoring game, the fantasy players do quite well. Devontae Adams going up against the Vikings. I love it. So go ahead and play Devontae Adams. And then for the Minnesota Vikings, Adam Thielen is very reliant on scoring a touchdown. And I talk about this every single week that, hey, if Adam Thielen doesn't score a touchdown, then you may be a little bit disappointed. But when I say that, I say that because it's true. But I'm not saying that to make you scared to play Adam Thielen because this guy basically scores a touchdown every single week. He pulls a fucking rabbit out of his hat and magically scores. And it's great for fantasy football. It's just very hard to project every single week because, hey, if he doesn't score, he's probably going to suck. But it seems like every single week he does score, so you got to start him. Fire up Adam Thielen up against the Green Bay Packers. Justin Jefferson is also one of those kind of no-brainer plays that you play every single week. So Justin Jefferson will be in my lineup. Again, I do expect this to be a high-scoring game. Then the Green Bay Packers, they also have these other wide receivers. They've got Alan Lazard. They have Randall Cobb. They have all these other names, and they're all interesting, right? Because you could see a way in your head, you're painting the picture, Bob Ross style, like I talked about earlier, where you're painting your picture of your idea of this game. And would you be surprised at all if Randall Cobb had two touchdowns? No. 
but you also wouldn't be surprised at all if instead of Randall Cobb, it was Alan Lazard or one of these other random ass wide receivers for the Packers. And that kind of confusion is why you just don't start any other Green Bay Packers wide receiver besides Devontae Adams. Next up, we got the Baltimore Ravens at the Chicago, Chicago Bears. Hollywood Brown, his health is up in the air. Seems as though he's going to play, though, based upon what I've read. You're obviously going to play him up against the Bears. You play him every single week. All it takes is one lucky catch deep down the field for Hollywood Brown to go for 75 yards and a touchdown. That is all it takes. He's fast as fuck, so you're going to play him here up against the Bears. Then they have Rashad Bateman. If Hollywood Brown was to not play, then I'm banging the fucking drums aggressively for Bateman because he would be the number one receiver on the team. He would get peppered with targets up against the Bears. That would be chef's kiss, man, you freak. Beautiful. Is that going to happen? Probably not. But I do believe that even if Hollywood Brown is in the game, that Bateman is a fantasy valuable asset. And then for the Bears, seems like Allen Robinson isn't going to play. So I'm throwing in Darnell. Here comes the Mooney because Mooney's been getting the ball a lot. And I understand that Allen Robinson being out doesn't even just push him up the pecking order even higher because Allen Robinson has already been casted towards the fucking side. He's been pushed away from this offense. He just hasn't done shit all year, but I am a lot more comfortable starting Darnell Mooney now, so I like him here up against the Baltimore Ravens. Next up, we move to the Cincinnati Bengals at the Las Vegas Raiders. In this game, I'm going to be starting both Jamar Chase as well as T. Higgins for the Cincinnati Bengals. Early on this season, I was humongous on T. Higgins. Or humongous on, I don't think that makes sense, but I was very high on T. Higgins. I was thinking, oh, Jamar Chase in preseason, the guy sucked. In training camp, all these reports, the B reporters said, oh, doesn't look very good. Seems like he's going to need some time. And a lot of people are like, oh, Jamar Chase is a bust, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, slow your roll. Don't call him a bust. But maybe he's going to struggle early on. It'll take some weeks to click. But then in week number one, he goes out there and bends over a defense. And clearly, Jamar Chase is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. And that has severely hurt T. Higgins because I thought that T. Higgins was going to be the number one wide receiver on the team. T. Higgins is still a startable wide receiver in fantasy football. This could be a higher scoring matchup between the Bengals and the Las Vegas Raiders, which will be great for T. Higgins and Jamar Chase. But I definitely do prefer Jamar Chase. But I will be starting up T. Higgins for the Las Vegas Raiders. They have Brian Edwards. They also have Deshaun Jackson, who Deshaun Jackson, what is you doing? What are you doing? You're walking right into the, basically, a clear shot into the end zone, and the guy tries to do something special, do a bit of razzle-dazzle, and, like, runs backwards and just fucking hands the ball to the Chiefs. What are you doing, pal? What are you doing? And then after that, the momentum completely goes to the Chiefs, and the Raiders go from being somewhat in the game to getting bent over a table and raw dog. They lost the game by a zillion, basically because the momentum shifted. I expect Hunter Renfro, though, to continue to be the number one guy on the team for the Raiders, the one consistent piece of the Raiders receiving offense, or the wide receivers for the for the Raiders. So I like Hunter Renfro here up against the Bengals. Tyler Boyd, Wynn Higgins, and Chase are playing. He's typically the odd man out. And then Brian Edwards, all those other guys. It's basically a guess which one's going to perform, and a lot of the time, neither of them will or none of them will, and then you'll just see Darren Waller have a great game. So Hunter Renfro is the only startable wide receiver for me out of the Las Vegas Raiders, and then obviously we're going to play Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. Next up, we got the Arizona Cardinals at the Seattle Seahawks. It appears that DeAndre Hopkins is not going to play this week, so he's not on the list, so we're firing up Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk is one of those guys that this week I know a lot of people are going to play and he is going to be either a complete and utter swing and a miss or a home run. I don't think I've ever once watched a game of Christian Kirk where this guy is just average, where he scores like 10 points. I genuinely don't think I've ever seen Christian Kirk get like 10, 14 points. He either gets like 30 points or gets like four points. I feel as though that's just kind of how it is. Going up against the Seattle Seahawks, who just got uh, eviscerated by the Packers. I understand the Packers didn't look great in that game, but I think the Arizona Cardinals will look good here, and I think Christian Kirk could have a great game. For the Seahawks, Russell Wilson looked bad last week up against the Packers. He just did. He looked terrible. It was clear that that finger, that mallet finger that he got, impacted him a little bit. I think that he will look a little bit better this week, so you gotta play Metcalf, and you gotta play Lockett. I don't love either of them, though, because I'm still a little bit concerned about Russell Wilson's health. Next up, we got the Dallas Cowboys at the Kansas City Chiefs for the final game before we discuss Sunday Night Football and Monday Night Football. Amari Cooper declared out in this game, so C.D. Lamb, you should be a lot more comfortable with him, and now Michael Gallup goes from being kind of 
an afterthought. Now, he's a great wide receiver on the Dallas Cowboys, but when you have Amari Cooper, when you have CeeDee Lamb, when you have Dalton Schultz, when you have Zeke, you have Tony Pollard, you have all these fucking mouths to feed, then Michael Gallup kind of just gets missed out on a little bit. Like, sure, there'll probably be a couple of games this season, uh, till the end of the season, maybe even in the playoffs, where Gallup has a great game and Cooper or Lamb suffer a little bit from that. But in a majority of the games, Gallup is a quote-unquote afterthought in the offense because of how good these other pieces are. But without Amari Cooper, I think you should be very comfortable playing Michael Gallup going up against the soft-ass Kansas City Chiefs defense. For the Chiefs, you're going to play Tyreek Hill. You're going to play him every week. It's a no-brainer. He's one of the only wide receivers in fantasy football that I will categorize as a game-breaker, meaning this guy could have He's like a couple of players we've talked about earlier, where all he needs is literally three catches, and he could have 125 yards and two touchdowns. That's just how good the guy is. He could easily score 40 points in this game up against the Dallas Cowboys, because while the Cowboys, their defense is great at not allowing teams to score, they just let up a zillion yards in the game. They just let up as many yards as you want. So Tyreek Hill going up against the Cowboys. This could get a little bit spicy. This could be a very high-scoring tit-for-tat back-and-forth affair. So I like Tyreek Hill in this matchup here up against the Cowboys. And then they have the other Chiefs wide receivers. They've got Byron Pringle. They've got McCole Hardman. They have Demarcus Robinson. Those are all fun names. McCole Hardman is probably the number two receiver there. But every single week... It wouldn't surprise me if Byron Pringle scored here or Demarcus Robinson. So the clear two players you want to be starting on the Chiefs, besides Patrick Mahomes, obviously, the two weapons on their team is Tyreek Hill and Kelsey. Outside of that, rather just leave him on the bench. Next up, we move to Sunday night football between the Pittsburgh Steelers at the LA Chargers. In this one, we're firing up Deontay Johnson as well as Keenan Allen. Mike Williams is on the naughty list. I know it's not Christmas just yet. It's not December just yet, but this motherfucker would be on Santa's naughty's list. He's on my naughty list. I am Saint Nick. What is he doing? This guy has completely fucked us over multiple weeks in a row. He starts off the season as one of the best receivers in fantasy football. Recently, I think he's been wide receiver 80 over the last four games. 80. You could pick up a wide receiver and play him, and he'll probably outperform Mike Williams. And I have seen absolutely nothing. I whipped out the microscope, was analyzing the game, and I see, hey, what is going to show me that Mike Williams is going to start doing more? And the answer is nothing. Nothing from these games shows me that anything is going to change. And until I see a change, until I see a better performance, I don't want to be starting him this week up against the Steelers. Keenan Allen is the clear number one receiver there uh, as of recently. So you're going to play him. Deontay Johnson. Sure, they have Ray Ray McLeod and all these other wide receivers, but Deontay Johnson is the clear number one guy. So you're going to be playing him, and you're going to be playing Mr. Keenan Allen. You're sitting down Mike Williams because all my homies hate Mike Williams. Final game here we got Monday night football between the New York New York football giants and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Tampa Bay. Godwin seems like he's on the injury report now. Now, I talked about this last night on the live stream. I was like, is Godwin good to go? I typically he's on like the injury report every week. Then there's nothing about him. I'm like, oh, he's fine. And then today pops up on the injury report. If he doesn't play, then you're going to play Mike Evans. If he does play, then you're playing Mike Evans. You're going to play Chris Godwin if he plays every single time because he's great. The Bucks are a great team. So you're going to play Godwin, and you're going to be playing Evans for the Giants. Galladay's there. Tony's there. Seems like Sterling Shepard isn't going to be there. But, like, how much can you invest in a Giants wide receiver? The answer isn't very much. Like, I think Tony outscores all of them and could have a big game, but he's also made of fucking glass and, like, gets hurt every time he has a big performance. And sometimes he just disappears because Daniel Jones doesn't see him. It doesn't make any sense. Why is he not being scripted to get the ball more? Why are they not crawling plays to give this guy the football? He's the best receiver on the team. Get him the ball. Not very complicated in my mind, but I guess it is for the Giants. So, Canarius, Tony, and Galladay are on the bench. And then you're going to be starting, obviously, the Buccaneers wide receivers. Antonio Brown allegedly, now I'm not saying this is true, allegedly created a a fake, a Fugazi um, vaccine card. Pretty funny, in my opinion. I think it's actually illegal to do that. So, that's not great if that's true. Very funny, though. Wouldn't uh, surprise me if that's something Antonio Brown would have done. So thank you guys all so much for watching today's video. If you did end up enjoying, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below, as well as hitting that like button. I would appreciate it a ton. I love you guys, as always. Goodbye.